welcome to Coffee with Ronnie. Hi, you guys. I, I realized that a lot of my Coffee with Ronnie start with, okay, this is going to sound really negative, but we're going to make it super positive by the end. That seems to be sort of my MO. But I know how hard it is for you guys and all of us in this creative pushing these creative rocks uphill that to stay positive. Sometimes that's really hard because the feedback is, is slow in coming and, and the results are slow in coming. And so it's easy to slip into negativity, but I try to stay positive as much as possible. I try to think about, so what, what's the flip side of this? How can I turn this around if I'm starting to feel like everything is not positive. What do I do about that? Let's, let's talk about my, my promise for you today, which is to talk about those evil twins, sales and rejection. Now, like I said, there is a lot of negativity in the world right now. And that, that's, that is not to be discussed here. It just is. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of us feel a little bit shaky. And so it's easy to let a lot of sort of the world's negativity and other people's negativity kind of suck us into that quagmire. And we as artists need to stay positive because we need to keep coming up with happy, meaningful work that brings positivity to the world. And so we have to sort of guard ourselves around those things that, um, that bring that negativity. So one of the things that I hear a lot, a lot on Facebook groups, with my coaching clients, with talking to other artists in general, friends is, is we all say at one point or another, and I hear it a lot is I hate sales. I hate the sales process. I hate selling myself. I don't want to do this. I do not at any cost want to sell my work. Fair enough. But if you choose it, selling is not going to be a thing that you want to do is that will cost you at any cost. It will cost you to not sell your work. But I think the word sales has gotten a bad rap and I try not to use it for a couple of reasons. One is we, you can't really sell something to someone if they don't want it. it you just can't. I mean, we have this connotation of sales of people that are like, I'm going to sell you my, my course or my program that's going to be the last thing you'll ever have to buy and it's going to be great and it's worth twenty thousand dollars but today only it's 1997 and free payments of blah 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 we hear that all the time all the time and i will promise you i will never do that to you but we have to exchange our talents and our creative work for money that is a transactional moment and some people might call that sales. So how does that look? And how do you stay out of that? I have to sell because to me, selling feels like an event. You either sell something or you don't sell something. But in the business that we are in, in any kind of creative business where you are actually placing your talents into the marketplace, that only starts with a conversation. It doesn't start with a sales pitch. Okay. So what if instead of saying, I hate sales, I hate this process. You could say, maybe I need to have more conversations with people. Maybe I need to open that door a little wider and have a few more frequent conversations. Would that feel better? Would that feel more meaningful about how you're going to get your work out into the market? That's for me. Let me tell you a little story. Okay. Say you go to a neighborhood barbecue. You're invited to a neighborhood barbecue and there are at the barbecue. It's a big backyard, you know, typical picnic tables, maybe swimming pool, barbecue area, food, beverages, the typical barbecue, backyard barbecue. You are there and there are 100 other people at the barbecue. Okay. So you probably know, say, you know, 20 of them by varying degrees. One might be your spouse that you came with. 
One might be your next door neighbor who you know really well, might be you know your cousin, sister, whatever. But let's just say those 20 people you know, and some of them you might just chat about your dogs with, but you know those 20 people, which leaves 80 people for you to potentially get to know, to be friends with, or to have some association with. So how do you get to know those 80 people? You do not set them up with a PowerPoint presentation about how wonderful you are and how astounding you are as a neighbor or a friend. You one-on-one -on -one have a conversation with them and you start to get to know them. Maybe you have some common interest. Maybe you realize, yeah, we're never gonna, this is not right. We're not making a connection. Or maybe there is a connection where you say, oh my gosh, you're from Ohio too? I had no idea. Or you like quilting? We should go to this show. Whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like. So you can choose to sit at the table with the 20 people you already know and hope that one of those people, those 80 comes over and maybe you're introduced to someone or maybe this off chance that they come over and go, you look nice, we should talk, are you from Ohio? I mean, you don't know, more than likely that's not going to gain you any more new friends or get you any more entrenched in your neighborhood, right? So you get up off the table, get off from the picnic table and you walk over to the barbecue and you start a conversation. And we don't know where that conversation will lead. You all know that you live in the same neighborhood, so there's some commonality. So if you take that idea and think about our business, your business, whatever that looks like for you, and think of it as a giant neighborhood and you want to get to know them better. So you will reach out to them and say, hey, can we have a conversation? I know you do this and I do that and I'd love to have a conversation with you. It is not a, I'm calling you up to sell you my artwork because that doesn't work. Nobody buys anything that they don't want to buy. Now, some of you may know Marty Siegelbaum from MHS Licensing, one of the smartest guys in this industry. He's an agent, he's one of the, one of the best agencies for artists and Marty, I remember him saying this to Jim and I years ago. He said, I tell artists that I can guarantee that I can get my work in front of people, but I can't guarantee that they will buy it or license it. There is no guarantee on that. There's, as we know, there are many, many reasons why they're not going to purchase that work or work with you on any scale, okay? so. That's just a given. So the flip side of that is rejection. So if you have it in your, if your attitude is I have to sell this thing, I have to sell myself and they choose not to buy it, then the binary opposite of that is I have been rejected. And every time you think to yourself, I have been rejected, you fall into a little hole. We're gonna use another analogy. You're falling into a hole every time you go, I've been rejected again, I've been rejected again, I've been rejected again. Because you have this idea that sales is a yes or no proposition. It is not the opening of a conversation. You think I either sell it and they buy it or I'm a dirt ball. <laughs> we know isn't true. You just haven't had the right conversation with the right person. And so if you think of rejection as this complete negativity, then you're always crawling out of that same hole. If you look at, we're not working together because of these various reasons, which we all know the various reasons, um, then you can say that wasn't the right conversation. We, I wasn't talking to the right person at the right time. And going back to my barbecue analogy, you might talk to somebody, you know, while they're flipping burgers and you have a conversation, you're thinking, eh, it didn't really go anywhere. And then later on, you are handing out cupcakes and you realize that they are into race cars and you're into race cars. So you never know at what point the conversation will turn to a more positive, more connected tone. So that's why we have to have a lot of conversations. Sometimes those conversations take place at shows, trade shows, gallery openings, uh, art fairs, those kinds of things. 
they might happen because you have consistently reached out via email to a lot of people. A lot of those 80 people at the barbecue need an email from you. And so you might, that's how you might meet them. That's how you might start that conversation. It might be because of a referral, because someone said, you know, you need to talk to so-and-so and, -so and I, let me hook you up. And I highly encourage that behavior. Or it might be through your agent that they're starting the conversations on your behalf. But it's always a conversation. It is not a binary, I don't like you, we're never working with you, unless you know you truly are a jerkball. So we're assuming here that your work is you know, up to industry standards, that you are presenting yourself well and speak well about your work, which is all learned behavior. And, and your, your understanding kind of what goes in the marketplace. And so we're assuming that all of those are in place. Because yeah, like I said, those can be massaged and learned. But if you start looking at this as, a, as the opening of a conversation and that you weren't rejected, it just wasn't right for you. And you start to consider that maybe it's not a, you always have to go back to this place of rejection. You always have to go back to this place of negativity that you just haven't had the right conversation yet. Then it kind of makes the whole thing a lot easier. And when you're thinking about this consistent behavior over time that moves you forward, think of all those cool conversations you can have. And when you think about it as a conversation, those tend to stick with people. Sales pitches come and go. Yeah, she showed me this thing. I can't remember what it was, but oh my gosh, we've had a couple conversations at Chosen. I'm really hoping that at some point we can work together because she's interesting and she has interesting ideas. So when you present it as such, as this open conversation, that's where the magic happens. That's where these things happen. And you are not in this negativity, this negative cycle all the time of trying to sell, getting rejected, trying to sell, getting rejected. And that's the pattern that I want you guys to consider just getting out of. And a lot of it is, man, I, I'm not a big fan of the word mindset, but it really is about flipping that switch a little bit. And if you think about this activity that we all have to do to get our work in front of people, again, via a trade show, via emails, a combo platter of all these things, it really is a sorting process, not a sales process. It's sorting through the people that you match up with best, that your work matches up with best. And if you've had those conversations and your work changes or you have a new idea, you can go back to those people. You haven't decided, well, they hate me and I've been rejected, so we'll never work together again, ever, ever, ever. So it really is an attitude shift and it's bringing positivity and trying to look at when you are feeling in that negative place, what is the, what is the way you can shift that thought process a little bit differently? And I think you can do that. I really do. It's not just Sunshine Ronnie telling you like, look on the bright side. It really is, there probably is a bright side if you're not looking at it as this giant chore of sales because we don't want to be that salesperson. We don't, you know, your artwork is not on some limited time. Like if you don't buy it today, it's the early bird special. You're going to get it next week for, you know, it's going to be twice as much, whatever. I mean, those are not techniques that we use in our industry, in any creative industry. The idea, the concept, the positivity, the what you're bringing to the table is what is important. And they want to talk to you. They want to talk to you. So open that conversation. And let's open this conversation, shall we? I'm going to check to see what everybody's saying. And I'd love to, um, if you have comments or questions, let's uh, entertain those and have a conversation about that. Sue Zipkin. No a loser, I am a loser. Yes, we often go there. We often go there, but we know. David, I know. It is nerve wracking, but you know, it's a conversation. I mean, if you bring it up to that, I'm just gonna talk to you. It's like, you know, if you were sitting on a bus with someone, you wouldn't feel like you needed to like, hey, I'm gonna entertain you and show you all the fabulous things I am so you can be my friends or like the barbecue idea. 
you're not going to bring that PowerPoint. And then they're all going to go, yeah, no, I, I've decided you're not going to be my friend today. It's an unfolding of these relationships. That's, that's it. And unless you have an agent for everything and you never have to speak to anyone, you're going to have to figure this out in some way. Jen, I have a goal of getting five rejections. That means I am getting out there and learning who is the right fit. And it, if it is and isn't for me, bingo. Go collect those rejections. I mean, every book you ever read about famous authors like Stephen King, people have so many rejections, so many rejections. And, you know, and this sounds super negative, but once you accept this as part of the deal of being a creative person, putting your work out in the world, most of the time it's going to be no. Most of the time. Nobody's at 100%. Nobody. And it's really until you start to, and that's why you have to keep doing this. And it's like, of course we all want to sit and watch, you know, sit and draw pictures. I mean, of course that's what we want to do. But... We also need to keep a roof over our head and not eat ramen every single night. Although I'm not opposed to that. Oh, good, Susie. Yes, rooting for you, David. Yes, it's, it's not a natural state for most people unless you are that person. It's like, by golly, today's a new offer. And that's not a lot of people that I know. Marty, this ties in so well with a lot of other things I've been hearing, developing genuine relationships as a tool for success. In this climate, that's the way it goes. You know, I, I do think that that is how you develop long-term relationships, not just because a sale feels like a one-time deal, like, man, I bought a car, you know, that was that, and I'll buy another one in 12 years. But, you know, when you think about, okay, here's, here's another thing that could sound negative. Take your average company that you want to work with. Say they make garden flags. And, oh, and this is dovetails nicely with the barbecue analogy. And they work with, say, 25 artists that have pretty much been doing the job. And, hey, we need Easter and we need a ladybug and we need a deer and, you know, Easter or a no, deer for Christmas, whatever that is. They usually go back to the people that they already know. That is a fact because they work with them, you know, until the status quo needs to change they're not necessarily going to add somebody new. But if you are having this open, free conversation with them, who do you think they're going to look at later to come back to and just say, oh, she's cool. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to talk more to her. And it is a long game. It is a long game. When someone says no, that I've sent my work, um, I do a few things. I ask if I may submit more and ask if there's a certain thing you, you look for, trending or a project. Always get yes. Keep on submitting, but getting an idea of what they want is still a little cloudy. Well, you know, Deborah, this is really interesting because one of the things we know about why your work wouldn't resonate with the company is, you know, has tons of things that don't have anything to do with you. One is it's not the right look or style for our company or our vision for this season, whatever that is. Um, it's not the right time. Sometimes that happens, often that happens. And then they can't remember that you submitted this thing six months too early and then they go, oh yeah, oh yeah, we forgot about that one. Human nature, they might have something similar to your look. So they might not be able to articulate that, but that is really a thing. And here's the thing that we just forget. Sometimes they don't know what they want. They just don't. And that's that we'll know it when we see it. And we saw yours and it wasn't it. And that's just like, that is not anything to do with you being a loser or a dirt ball. That has to do with, they don't know what they want. And so it is hard for them to articulate it because if they could come back to you and say, yeah, we want, you know, um, a train with uh, circus animals in it with, um, you know, a clown driving it, then that would be an assignment. But sometimes they don't know that. It's hard to articulate, which is why we go back to what we always go back to, which is doing your most authentic um, good work and sending it out a lot. 
that's the whole key. Simple, simple. So Pin, what about emailing people cold? Sure. That is, that is also a start of a conversation. That's the very start. Because that's that, um, you know, you're not at the barbecue and you're not at the trade show or whatever, but you want to work with XYZ company. You do the diligence of finding that art director and you say, hey, I'd really love to talk to you about my work. This is a sampling of it. Is this something we can have a further conversation about? And you can actually put that in the email. Can we have a further conversation about this? Now, that just put them at ease when you say something like that. That just put them at this place where they say, you know, I would like to have a conversation with her. Now, it might be through email or they'll say send me something else. And I think Deborah's um, idea of can I continue to submit is a great one. That, that keeps that conversation going. It's a conversation. And they might say, no, I don't think this is right for us. Well, then you're free to take them off the list. Then you're free, you know. And I'm not saying that these things don't sting when they decide not to go forward with you. And particularly when you are in the running for something, and I've certainly been down this road where there's a collection and it's moving along the paces and everything looks great and then it goes away for any number of reasons. They pick something else, they went a different direction, they went out of business, whatever that is. I'm not saying it doesn't sting, but it just can't sting for very long. It just can't because you don't want to live down in that hole. You can't live in that hole because you will never crawl out of it. Uh, Marty, sending postcards, yes. Follow up, follow up, follow up is really good. Um, and sending out postcards is really good because you never know what's sticking on someone's bulletin board. They may be holding that and they're just waiting for the right time or they just find it amusing for themselves. But Setting out postcards that are not necessarily strategically sent to the people you want to work with can be kind of a waste of time. So you have to, again, you have to be really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to be really uh, driven to understand who, you're, who you want to be talking to for the most part. And then the magic happens somewhere else. I don't know who to credit with this, but it's one of my favorite sayings. I'm beginning to like the sound of my feet walking away from things that are not meant for me. Amen. Amen. Because only until you have those conversations do you know whether this is right for you or not. That is huge. Okay, let's go back to the barbecue. You walk up to some guy and you realize, oh, no. <laughs> This is not going to work. And then you find your way to say, oh my gosh, I have, to, I have to call my husband real quick. Or whatever that is where you have to go away. But it is really nice to know that you don't want to work with them. And sometimes we have this pie in the sky idea of this company that we want to work with or this person we want to work with. And you have a conversation and you're like, uh, no, thank you. But you don't know that until you've had a conversation. And it's as simple as a conversation. Um, even though when we work with a company for years, they say we know it when we see it. They do. They do. I mean, sometimes people have very strategic ideas of what they are looking for, and they will know exactly which artist to go to to get that. But often they are looking for, they might have some vague, like we're looking for a new inspirational line, or we're looking for some Christmas that just, isn't the same that we've seen over and over and they don't really know that. And they, okay, one is sometimes they can't articulate what that is and help you deliver what they want. And sometimes they don't want to because then that does go into that assignment thing. And, and I certainly have been in that situation where you're trying to second guess what this is because they've given you a bunch of information and you go, how about this? No, how about this? No. And that's a, that's a tough situation to be in. And so that is a real thing. We'll know it when we see it. And that is why if you are the person that keeps showing them things, they may see it and go, that's that. But that is that constant conversation. That is that constant communication with people that you need to just employ and not think of it as an, that, that a sale is the end result of that. Because you don't, you want more than one transaction. Uh, thanks. I will keep sending. Plus I'm having too much fun to quit. Yeah, I know. And you know, it is a thrill. 
I mean, of course it's a thrill when someone says, we'd really like to work with you. We've got a great project for you. I mean, that is awesome. That, that tells you that you have done enough to get to move this to this level. And un unless you get the word immediately from someone that, you know, you're very talented, but this is not us. And I've heard that. I've certainly heard that over the years. Um, that might be a nice way to say your work is horrible, but often it is a, this is really cool. This is never going to go for our customer. And wouldn't you like to know that early? And is that a rejection? Do you have to take that personally when it's not right for their customer? That's not you. That's your customer. That's them. It's not you. As long as you are doing work that is meaningful and um, is what you should be doing, your voice and vision. Jen, I have that recently when an agent who I thought was my dream agent contacted me. We had nothing in common. It was not a good match. I was so glad to learn that before signing on with them. Hello. Oh, okay. I saw a Facebook post the other day that someone said, does anyone know anything about XYZ agency that can private message me? Because I just signed with them and I have some questions. And I'm thinking, wouldn't you want to know that stuff before you sign with an agent? <laughs> is that just me? And, you know, that's the thing, too. I have come across this a couple of times. That was one of them. And then I had another uh, conversation with someone else that you have to be really careful not to give off the desperation vibe or be desperate for this. And you, and you stop being desperate when you open your door, when not everything is weighted 100% of your success or your failure. When you start to get it out there in front of a whole bunch of people, you're not desperate anymore. You're not at the, at the mercy of this one person that's going to bestow this career on you. You're going out and talking to a whole bunch of people about that. And that is not everyone's natural state. I believe I've said this before, but when I was a Girl Scout and it was Girl Scout cookie time, I hated Girl Scout cookie time. It was before you sat at the card table in front of the supermarket and sold your Girl Scout cookies. You went door to door when they let little children knock on doors. It was a beautiful time. And I was so nervous. I mean, I loved everything else about scouting, particularly the crafts, the food, all of that, the singing, the doing all the things, the poems, the badges. The selling was horrible for me. And I wrote down my sales pitch on an index card to call my very own relatives to sell Girl Scout cookies. And I was horrible at it horrible. And even for years, I thought, I'm a terrible salesperson. I cannot do this. There is no way, no way, no way, no way. And there was a time I worked for a large graphics company, commercial graphics in the Twin Cities. And I was a salesperson with a car phone and a bow tie. And I had to go through sales training. And most of the time through sales training, I'd be like, is my eye twitching? Because I hate every single second of this sales training. And I realized that once I was myself and once I was just a curious person and a person that could just have a conversation with someone, can we work together? Can we not? What's it gonna look like? Do you like this? It was so much easier than trying to put this whole sales thing on top of things. And that's when I started to get the vibe about how negative we feel about sales. But we all want to buy things. We all have to make transactions. But you know how it feels like when you go in to buy a car and you're just like, no, you know, or whatever you're going to buy. We're not that. We're not that. We're not selling things that way. <laughs> David, you're like everyone in this group's personal Glenda the Good Witch. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think I have some marketable work, but it's not the standard cute type that looks good on napkins and pillows. No offense intended. I like that stuff too. I'm wondering how I find an agent for fine art prints. Um, that is, that is, you do that the same way you do, you would find an agent if you did do cute prints for napkins. You find an agent who shares your vision. You, you find an agent who has access as much as you can have. And again, conversation. You could talk to them and saying, you know, 
I know you're an agent and you like, you know, you are in the business of helping your artists stable, you know, get licenses or deals or whatever that looks like. I'm a little different. Is this something that interests you? And can we have a conversation about this? So it really is about, again, more conversations. And when you're not in sort of, you're in a business, but you're not necessarily, you fit straight down this lane, then you just have to do more work to figure that out. But that is, you know, that doesn't mean that everyone's going to reject you or if it's even rejection, because that's, if that's not in the business they're in, then that's not a rejection. That's just not the business that they're in. So you just need to sort of uncover and have more conversations of what that might look like for you and have some fairly good ideas of how you think your work would apply to this kind of work and who that customer is. You know, if you've watched any of these Coffee with Ronnie's, you know that I always place that who is this for question way early in the process. But that's that's just that same process. It's just finding the right person. And that might be a lot of conversations. But you know, here's the thing. I really like people. Not everybody likes people. And there are certainly people that I'm like, yeah, I don't really like the general public. Not everyone is comfortable with this process. That is for sure, true, true, true. And so either you need to go have, you need to have someone do that on your behalf. Sometimes, and I'm not saying this is you, Lana, because this is kind of off that subject. But if you're not good at this, you know, there, there's obviously the agent route or some sort of consultant that takes your work out on your behalf on a one-on-one -on -one basis or on a situational basis. There's always ways to slice and dice this. The other thing is, and this isn't for everyone, but sometimes a spouse or your sister or someone can do this better than you can and make these, have these conversations on your behalf and you make some deal with your sister or your spouse that this is how you're gonna do it. Now your spouse, you know, obviously brings more money into the entire household, it would be worth their time to do that. If people have different skill sets than you, maybe that's an option. Maybe that's an option. Or there are ways to get training in how to feel more comfortable doing this. There are books to talk about how to do this. You can write yourself a script. Worked for me with Girl Scouts. Not that I was a top seller in Girl Scouts, but I sold enough cookies that I could go to camp. There are ways that you can help yourself do this. And like I said, not everyone is born to it. And, and that sales training I took and that sales job really did help me to think on my feet. And, and it wasn't always comfortable and it certainly wasn't easy. Um, but there are ways to get better at it. And, and don't think because no matter what age you are, that you can't get better at it, you're trainable, you can learn, you can find somebody that can help you. You can come up with sort of your standard way of starting these conversations. Denise, I find sometimes my disliking marketing is an underlying lack of confidence in my abilities. No matter how much I have had success, I am an introvert and that doesn't help. Sorry if you have covered this, I need, had to step away. Um, no, Denise, I mean, basically, I mean, that's what I'm saying. This isn't natural to all of us but there are ways and last week we did the books um and there is that that book the introvert entrepreneur is highly recommended highly recommended for anyone that's in business that doesn't feel comfortable with this she goes through a lot of stuff and a lot of it is and this dovetails nicely with what we do and and how people want to hear about our work she talks a lot about storytelling because we are doing things that are it's not commodity items. They're things that have emotions attached to them. And sometimes putting a story around it is, is a lot easier to deliver the information instead of, hey, I got this really cool thing for you. You know, I mean, so I, I recommend that book. That, that, that is very helpful. I should roll. I can sell other people's stuff like crazy. Yeah, maybe I should think of my stuff as someone else's. I mean, that would be a really good exercise to do. That would be a really good exercise. Or if you have, you know, I'm a big fan of having an art partner, somebody that's your touchstone, somebody that you call and gripe with or talk about or inspire each other on any given day. It's all of those things. 
but maybe that's an exercise that you could do. It's going to feel super contrived and forced at first. But if you, if you took their art and said, well, here's how I would present your work. It's lively, it's colorful, it's da, da, da. You might really get some ideas on how you could say that that doesn't feel salesy, that doesn't feel contrived, that you're just really doing that. So it could be a really good exercise for people to do. So match yourselves up and do that. It, it's just easier to promote other people. And so we either have to practice with other people that are kind and supportive, or we have to really move ourselves away from the emotions of what is attached to that. And that is, you know, to me, that's a positive step. That, that is a way to say, this is some cool stuff. This is some cool stuff. This is why I do it. And when you have sort of that, not the elevator speech necessarily, but if you can easily talk about your work, that's what makes it easy to start a conversation. And I'm, I'm just asking you to consider that everybody has to do some sort this process somehow. If you're going to get an agent so they can do this on the front end for you, you still have to have a conversation with an agent. And like Jen said, thank goodness she had a long conversation with this person. She's like, we do not jive. This is not a good fit. And my goodness, I'm so glad we know that. Jen doesn't feel rejected by that. She feels relieved by that. Is this right for me? Is the right for the big arc coming up for me? And, and you get to reject just like they reject, if we want to use the negative term, rejection. Or do we just say, we're moving on? I, I would be interested to know if, if that is helpful for you. If, if you can start to look at this, not as this binary, I have to make a sale. And if I don't make a sale, I'm rejected. And think about the next few weeks or the next few months saying, how many conversations can I start? Because it all starts with conversation. And one of my favorite quotes, I will end with this unless anyone has another question. My favorite quote is from the Satellite Sisters who had a, um, they had a radio show. They're five sisters that live all across the world. And their tagline was basically, not every conversation can change the world, but any conversation could. So any one of these conversations could change the trajectory of your career. But until you have that conversation, you will never know that. So I want you to start next week or tomorrow, no pressure, and start to say, who can I have a conversation with? Who do I want to talk to today? And start to reach out and see what that looks like. And I think when you start to look at it as the beginning of conversations, instead of trying to drill down a sale, you're going to see things start to move. And I will be very curious and interested to know if that works for you. So you can DM me about that, or you can put it here on the Facebook comments and I would love to hear that. But again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you're here. I have, I really do enjoy this though. So I, uh, again, thanks you guys. I mean, seriously, and cheers to everyone and stay caffeinated, my friends. <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs>